Hey, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. We're back again, and this time we've got another one of these vintage uh, bait casters that has come in. Uh, I guess I must be getting a reputation from being able to take them apart and kind of service them and put, put them back together again. This one, uh, is, I, I'm not familiar with it. It's called the Game Getter. It looks like every other uh, silver-plated reel from the 1950s, and like most of them, it's pretty sluggish. So... Uh, I was told this came off of a rod that uh, has been sitting in a uh, closet for some time. And uh, they asked me if I could just make it uh, run a little bit easier, give it a tune-up. It doesn't look like it needs much of a clean-up, but uh, give it a tune-up. And I thought while I did that, I would uh, kind of uh, do a video on it so that anybody who has this type of a reel or anybody who sees one of these laying around on a garage sale or a... Uh, uh, tag sale or any of the like, flea markets and so on, that uh, you're not too shy about going getting one. And uh, let's see if we can get lucky here now. Uh, so we're going to start by removing the pieces and parts and uh, we'll show you how to clean these up, how this reel is made. And uh, hopefully uh, when it gets back out, it'll do more than sit in a closet. Hopefully it'll go get, uh, uh, get some fishing time out on the water as well. Uh, while I am doing this, I'm going to uh, thank all of our first responders, our essential personnel, folks like law enforcement and EMTs and fire, and uh, certainly everybody in the medical field, and all of our hometown heroes, whether it's uh, the folks currently giving out the vaccines, or if it's uh, folks working in long-term care facilities or nursing homes and the like. Thank you for everything it is that you do. It really is appreciated. And you are helping us get through this pandemic by uh, all of the actions that you take. Thank you for what it is that you do. I can't thank you enough. The, uh, I'm just using some steel wool, clean off some of the dried grease. These things are pretty well, they're, they're turning, but they're not turning much. This one's turning less than the other. I'm just going to soak this with the penetrating oil here. This is kind of a plastic or some kind of a plastic subset. I'm just going to soak that and we'll, we'll see if it loosens it up at all. Sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. But I just like to, to soak that up. I also like to wear a protective glove so that most of the stuff like that uh, penetrating oil there doesn't get on my hands. And I also use a parts tray to uh, hold all the pieces I take off so that when it's time to reinstall, well, I can find them. All right, we're going to take the side plate off first. There should be there's four screws here. And that screwdriver's too big, so we're going to move to a, a micro screwdriver. you got to be careful with these screw sets. You don't want to uh, damage them because they're all pretty hard to find. This reel, I would estimate, was 1950s, 1960s. And uh, you can be assured that with a name like Game Getter, which I haven't heard of, and uh, the age of the reel, it's going to be difficult to find a replacement part. So just be careful. Take your time with these. There's no rush in real repair. And uh, eventually you can get to uh, end of job. So this one says patent applied for. This looks very much like a generic reel. I'm not quite sure what was patented any different. And there's no uh, stamping on here. It says made in the US, but it doesn't say where it was made in the US. And I'm not familiar if this is just a trade brand, for example, or if this uh, was an actual company making their own reels. All right, we've just pulled the four screws off. That'll enable us to take the side plate off, take the spool out, and we can see it's a pretty straightforward, single gear, kind of a driven reel. And we have, uh, well, this just kind of come out, no? But we're pressed in there. That's interesting. Usually you can remove these main uh, main gears, but this assembly is all pressed in. So that's not going to let us push through or do anything with that. So the first thing we're going to do with that then is we're going to just spray it down. Let that kind of take its work there on any grease to loosen. This appears to be an aluminum spool. We're going to uh, just clean that up. And that gear is, well, usually you can get them on, but there must be a little clip or something holding that on. All 
Okay, so we'll zoom in. Okay, while that's, uh, we're just going to set that aside, let it do its work. We'll come over to the spool. We'll make sure that the spool is clean. It's got a gear that looks like it's pressed on there. Just make sure the teeth in the gear are clean. They are. This reel looks like it's suffering from what every, every reel of this age suffers from when it's sitting in a closet for a while. And that's dried grease. So we're just going to go ahead and make sure that we get a good coating of grease. Again, that gear was clean. Do the same thing on the back side here. I'm just going to put that in my parts tray for a moment. There's a lot of dirt that's built up behind here. So I'm going to just kind of spray this down, see if we can't clean some of the inside out. I'm using that as a lubricant, and then I'm using that steel wall to try and clean up the old dirt. You could use a scrubby pad. It would kind of have the same effect. And it's just, uh, it looks like dust. I guess whatever might gather in the back of a closet, quite honestly. But uh, it seems to have done a nice job. These were generally German silver plated, so they were nice, well-made reels. They weren't uh, skimping on the, the coatings on it at all. And then you rarely see a lot of corrosion on these. What you do see is a lot of dirt, which is what we have here. And we're just uh, working with that pen penetrating oil as a cleaner or a degreaser. And we're working on the uh, getting the tight spots with a cotton swab. So, most part, this is easy enough to do. A lot of people want to throw these reels away because they become sluggish. And uh, I guess just don't understand that all it takes to restore this is a little bit of extra grease and a little bit of elbow grease. And uh, generally, these things go right back together and work very nicely. Underneath here, we have a pawl and a worm assembly. It's moving. I want to move it over to one side. We'll take that screw off. We'll see if we might be able to get that pawl out of there. There's a little shield. That screw holds a pawl in there. There's a shield that has a little hole in it that enables you to, to oil the pawl from underneath. And if you find one of these reels that's not working, generally it's because the pawl is broken. And uh, those are almost impossible uh, to find. So, <clears throat> okay, there you go. In this case, it's interesting. This has got a double-sided pawl. So I like that. Wow, that's, if we can get it out of here. I like the thinking here. Wow, that's, uh, that's pretty ingenious. Maybe that's what the patent, patent applied for is. Yeah, here you go, look at this. So we have two sides of the pawl. So if one wears down, all you have to do is reverse the pawl. Very unusual, very great forward thinking. All right, I like that. Credit to uh, the designers here. Very good. Most of the time, you only get the single side pawl on the assembly, and uh, when one breaks, you got to go reverse the pawl. Penn tried to answer that a little bit. What Penn did was they put a second pawl into the, uh, the side plate assembly, so at least you didn't have to go far if you needed to replace it. But this one, uh, interestingly enough, just flip it around. Very good. All right, I'm gonna. I took it out. I inspected it. It was nice and clean, but it's like everything else needs some oil. Let's go put the oil back in. I left that uh, little holder right on my my desk here, so let's get that back on. There's a little bump on the holder. It's going to sit in that cavity for the to hold the pole down. And we're going to try and get this little screw back in. And just put some grease on that there so that it works to hold it. So these little wheels are a lot of fun. A lot of folks just kind of dismiss them because of the age and, and maybe uh, the simplicity of the design, no ball bearings, those kinds of things. You know what, sometimes you don't need all that stuff. These are what's called knuckle buster reels. There is no anti-reverse built into this. So your reel will backspin in free spool. Now some of the, uh, the designs out there a little bit later did have the, uh, uh, the free spool override in there, but this one does not. Wow, look at that, it's moving already. I'm gonna put a nice coat of uh, oil onto the worm drive. This looks like the worm drive was made yesterday. Nice and clean and clear. 
So we've greased the back of the spool, greased the front of the spool. Let's go ahead and put that on. That works nicely. So all we got to do then is clean up this side. I wish there was a way to get into that gear. There's not. As I mentioned, we got it pressed on here. So you kind of got to learn your, your limits. Don't go trying to break something that, uh, that can't be adjusted there. Like the others, we're going to put a good coating of grease onto the main gear and onto the gear that's going to drive the ex the worm gear. One drives the spool, one drives the, the worm gear. And if you just flip it around enough, you'll get it going until you get it all done. Good amount of grease there. And then I can't get in here, but there is an oil spout in the oiling hole there. So let's go ahead and we drop in there so that it comes down the side and then let's just go reinstall it's kind of that simple so a reel that somebody uh, may have given up on because it's uh, tight all of a sudden gets that second chance just need to line up the holes properly just like that the four side plate screws we'll go put those back in and this is a good time to tell you if you like what you're seeing if you kind of enjoy real repair as either a hobby or just an escape uh, or if you're more into it and you want to see all different types of reels and how they come together and, and how to service them uh, then I'd ask you to subscribe to my channel uh, that keeps my channel vibrant and uh, keeps you aware of uh, the, the items that I post and of course, if you subscribe, hit notifications, and that way you'll see all of the, the videos as they come up. I've been trying to post on a daily basis lately, just to kind of keep every minds, everybody's mind off the pandemic. And I'm going to continue to do that for a while. I work mostly on reels that come into my shop. I don't own a lot of these reels. I own, I own a few, but most of the ones that come into the shop are customer projects. And uh, those customer projects become the sources of the videos. So. If you, uh, if you want to see what's showing up in my shop, just uh, kind of stay tuned and stay with the, uh, the subscription button and I'll show you what I'm working on. So let's see if that uh, penetrating oil helped at all. Now I loosened this one up a little bit. How about the other one? Yeah, the other one loosened up too. So I imagine with a little bit of love and attention, this one, one side is a little harder to turn than the other, but the penetrating oil has at least made these loosen. And I imagine if I come back tomorrow, and I grab this handle, it'll be in a whole lot better shape in terms of uh, turning free and easy. In the meantime, let's just get this one seated properly. Let's go put that cap nut back on. We'll give it a test drive, and you'll kind of know how to, uh, how to tune up a game getter. And if anybody has any information maybe on where, where in the U.S. this reel was made, if it was a trade reel, or if there was actually a manufacturer, who did this line of product. Uh, anything you can fill in in terms of the details, I'm always interested in learning. So there you go. So we've uh, re reinstalled the handle. The handle is turning, albeit a little bit tight, but it's still turning. This reel is a whole lot more free in terms of spinning. And I think there's actually an adjuster here that you can back off a little bit. Yep, there's an adjuster there that will help you with it as well. So there you go. That's how the game getter was made. My estimate is uh, 1950s, 1960s in terms of the date of this reel. It's a beautiful little reel and it's ready to go fishing again. So I hope you've enjoyed that. If you did, please like it. Any questions you may have on this reel or any reel in particular, please leave them in the comments section. If you're stuck, if you're repairing a reel and you're stuck and I can help you get unstuck, well, ask the question. If I know the answer, I'll be happy to provide it to you. And finally, if you have a reel that uh, you would like to have service, but you're not up for servicing it yourself, why don't you contact me on the email on the business card that follows, and I'll be happy to provide you with that information. So this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Please stay safe, stay well, stay vigilant in this pandemic, and stay watching. Have a great day.